Welcome back to the channel. My name is Abel. Welcome back to Football Manager 2021 and Eastern Resurgence 2 with Stalwart Bucharest. We are taking on the so far undefeated UTA Arad in our home game. We might have the edge in this one. It's going to be a difficult one though. We are six games into season five. So far we have won four and we have lost two. I will take you through the results off camera shortly. But today against UTA going to be a tough one but hopefully we will come out with uh, three points. And as always, if you're enjoying the series, do drop a like and leave comments on the videos. It's the best way to support and help the channel. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. So last episode, we kicked off season five with a 2-0 win away against Sikh Jureda, winning our opening game for the fifth season in a row. Good first half. Dull second half, but we managed to get three points and a good start. Before we go into the games off camera, let's talk transfers, because I've been busy and I've managed to get Mostly the players that we need before the window shut. A few players have gone out on loan. Sherban, Sherbanescu, Kozlov. Mihai has gone for 20,000. Honestly, didn't realise this was a permanent deal. I wanted to loan him and I didn't realise it was a permanent deal because he had a decent future, Mihai. Uh, but last time we had signed Andre Radu, uh, the left back from Gaz Matan Medias. You will notice that despite us having lots of money in the transfer budget, we haven't spent a penny. They've all been either free transfers or loan deals. So we haven't actually spent any money uh, in, tra in transfers I've saved it and also I've managed to get not a bigger transfer budget but one for next year uh, I wasn't able to increase our transfer budget this season despite us having more money than we've ever had due to TV money but next season we will have at the very least just under a million pounds to spend so we're going to try and get through this season and stay up and hopefully keep our place in the league and then next year we're going to hit the button on that big money and we're going to start spending big. So let's go through the six new signings we have brought in. Then starting with Octavian Nicolau, uh, a young striker. Um, going to be maybe third choice, maybe even fourth choice, depending on where Nezovic plays. Uh, he's 22 years old. Good finisher of the ball. 15 finishings, good. He's decent in the air as well. He's six foot. His jumping reach isn't great, but his actual heading of the ball, not too bad at all. He's decent off the ball. His composure's good. He's got decent acceleration. Um, yeah, could play here and there. He's going to be like a backup striker, but definitely a good one. We've got a uh, young central midfielder. Elvis Ibisevic has joined us. Last played for Red Star Belgrade, the Montenegrin. He's 19. Uh, good passer of the ball, 14 passing, decent stamina, uh, decent teamwork, de decent decision making. Got good potential, whether he'll meet it or not, we'll see. Uh, he is wanted and is on the loan list, so we'll probably send him out on loan this season if we can. But yeah, definitely one that you might see more of in the future. Robert Gitsar has joined on loan from our opponents today, UTA Arad. He's a right back that's going to provide some backup and some maybe some competition to pop off. Good crosser of the ball, 14 crossings, good. His marking and tackling, not too bad. Physicals all over, just decent. 11s and 12s are sort of the path of the course at the moment for us, I think. Also from UTA, we've signed Dennis Belenny on a season-long loan. Um, just to be a backup centre-back, uh, fourth choice. Not sure how much he'll play, but Belenny's on loan again from UTA. 13s across the board for heading, marking and tackling. Not too bad at all. Uh, it's decent in the air as well. 13 jumping reach at 6 foot 1. Not too bad. Some good mentals in there as well. He's aggressive-ish. Uh, concentration's all right. Positioning's good. He's fairly determined. Um, he's only two stars, so he is backup uh, centre-back, fourth choice centre-back. But he's not bad. The rating's probably a bit harsh, if you ask me. We've got ourselves a Nigerian striker up front. Tarafik Ishmahil uh, has joined us from Frederikstad. Uh, he's 24 from Nigeria, playing in Norway. So he doesn't even have joint nationality. He starts out at Nor in Norway in Skeed. So I don't know how he's got there. Maybe he's got like Norwegian parents or something. But he hasn't got any joint nationality. 15 finishing's good. Mentors, some pretty good ones in there. He's composed. Uh, you've got 12s on flair and teamwork. They're okay. Uh, agility is good. Pace is pretty good. Not particularly strong. Only 5 foot 7. So it could be a real little nuisance up front in East Mahill. Uh, 24 years old. Yet to start a game for us. He did have an appearance from the bench. But I'm excited to see what this guy can do. He looks promising. Uh, the last player we brought in is a right winger. He's Ukrainian. It's Oleksiy Kazchuk. He's 24. Uh, just providing some cover for that right wing. Because we had um, Bazan last season who's left uh, and also Dragic is the only other one other than the Goisku that can play out there so we did it needed a little bit of cover over there I think he doesn't look too bad he's three and a half stars um again 11 and 12s for stuff like crossing could be better but could be a lot lot worse he's he's quick 
14 pace and 13 acceleration, he's, he's fairly quick. Decision making is not too bad either. So I don't think he'll be our primary ringer. I think Nagoyski will play as often as he can, but Kastrick's just there for a bit of um, support if need be. Uh, we managed to get just about everything I wanted to done. The only thing we didn't manage to do that I wanted to do was get more youngsters in that could go straight into the team. I'll explain why. Uh, we have to have two under-22 homegrown players in the starting eleven. At the moment, we do have that with Vasilescu and Nagoyescu. The only other under-22s we have are Nikolau, a striker that's probably not going to play, and Belen, the centre-back that's not probably not going to play very often. So it essentially means that we have to play Vasilescu and Nagoyescu, uh, and if one of them gets injured, one of these two will have to come in, unless we've got some homegrown players that could play in our youth teams which there probably aren't a lot maybe one or two but um yeah the only thing we could didn't manage to do was bring in some youngsters that were homegrown that could go into the team didn't quite manage to do that it's difficult because they're all very expensive again we've been scouting for these kinds of players as uh, as you can see they want like hundreds of thousands of pounds for them the best one this Ote, this left back we could have got in on loan and then we looked permanently it's going to be like at least a million pounds we don't have that sort of money so that's all the transfer stuff out of the way now it's time to go through the games that we played off camera, five of them. Started off with a 4-2 home win against Gaz Matan Medias, where we were 2-0 down. We had a rotten first half, but really turned it around. Uh, Moisa and Dragnea scored the goals in the first half for Medias as they took a 2-0 lead. Didn't throw the bottle, but I was not very, very happy at all uh, to be 2-0 down after half time. But they responded well in the second half. Nezovic with a goal uh, less than three minutes into the second half. Immediately after that, it was 2-2, Nagoyescu with an equaliser, so a great response. Uh, Nagoyescu then scored our third to give us a lead, that was just after the hour. And then number four came two minutes from time, uh, with Jonas Ispas getting the goal from the bench. So a terrible start, but second half was much, much, much better. Then we had a phenomenal performance in the Eternal Derby. 4-1 home win against Dinamo Bucharest. And this time, they didn't beat themselves, there was no penalties in this one, it was just us playing them off the pitch. Phenomenal performance. And uh, yeah, we went behind early, Florescu getting an early goal for them inside 70 seconds, I think it was. It was just over a minute. So a bad start to the game, but we grew into it. And at the end of the day, we deserved to win. We were just so much better than they were. Negoiscu equalising straight after Florescu's goal. It was 1-1 after less than three minutes. Ispas got himself a brace to send us into half-time, three goals to one. Uh, and then five minutes from time, Stupart with a free kick, scoring our fourth goal. Uh, he came off the bench replacing Nezovic, who had a bit of a quiet game compared to the rest of the team. But a 4-1 home win against uh, Dinamo Bucharest. Great performance. Really, really pleased with it. And uh, yeah, bragging rights in the Eternal Derby. Then we suffered defeat for the first time in this season. This was away against our other rivals, FCSB. Just to give you an idea of how big this rivalry would be in theory. Imagine MK Dons versus AFC Wimbledon, but 10 times bigger. That's what we're looking at with this sort of game. When Stalwa eventually get to the first division in real life, this game is going to be just utterly mental. Like the fans for this one are going to be ridiculous. Uh, but this one against FCSB, we put up a hell of a fight, but ultimately came up second best. Our fullbacks had a rotten day today. Radu played his first game, I think. They got a 5.9. Popov wasn't much better. They had a really bad day and they got ran riot by the FCSB attackers. Wasn't a bad performance by us though. We went behind early on at Yanshu with a goal for FCSB. Uh, we equalised not long after that. Ispas with him, uh, a goal for himself. That was on the 14th minute. Uh, and we almost managed to hold on to a draw. It was 1-1 for a long time. And then in the last 15 minutes or so, FCSB found another gear as Petre gave them the lead on 77 minutes. And then two minutes from time, Stoika scored their third. So we, we had a good effort in this one, but unfortunately, FCSB just showing that little bit of quality at the end of the game. Uh, however, we did respond as we managed to get a 2-1 win at home against Universitatia Cryova. Um, it was a uh, tight game, this one. Cryova maybe a little bit unlucky. They did have a goal disallowed four minutes from time. So yeah, maybe lucky to get a win in this one. Didn't have a great deal of shots on target and didn't look as good as we have done in previous games, but we got the three points. Nezovic got himself a goal midway through the first half. Had a slow start to the season. I think this might have been his first goal. Uh, Ali Bikov equalised on 37 minutes for Krova. Uh, went into half time, one goal apiece. And then Nagoyescu got the winner just before the half hour mark, who's been our one of our best players so far this season. Had a really good start 
And uh, yeah, this was a, a good ma match rating performance. We just didn't create a great deal of chances going forward. But the ones that we did create, we did convert from. So that's good. And then lastly, it was a 3-2 defeat away against the former champions, Sepsi, who um, season before last won the title. Uh, then they had a bit of a lower finish that might have been um, due to European football they were in. Uh, they were in the Europa League group stages, so um, that might have affected their football and might have affected their form. Uh, but here, they beat us three goals to two. They were 3-0 up. We almost pulled it back, but didn't quite manage to equalise. Varga with a brace for Sepsi, uh, giving him a 2-0 lead inside 20 minutes. Chilea then uh, scored a third for Sepsi uh, three minutes into the second half. We were really staring down a heavy defeat here. It was a really unfortunate performance and not a good one. Uh, but then we managed to pull back a couple of goals. Vasilescu with his first goal of the season on 55 minutes. And then about 10 minutes after that, it was 3-2. Jonat Sispas with another goal uh, to make it 3-2. But we couldn't get that third goal. Uh, we came close. Had like a big chance late on, but ultimately it was a 3-2 loss against the uh, former champions. But it's been a good start to the season. Winning four out of six games is a good start. We lost the other two, but there were games where I think we were expected to lose. Against FCSB, we were underdogs. Against Sexpsy, because we were sort of underdogs. We were away from home. It's, it wasn't a bad start. 12 points from six games is pretty good going. So let's jump into the game against UTA Arad then. I think we're going to start on balance and see how things go. Arad are unbeaten so far, so we'll have to see how things go. Uh, Beleni and Gitsa unavailable. They're against their parent club, so we won't be able to play them. So we'll go Radu and Brisanovic on the bench in their place. We'll keep the starting 11, I think, the same. East Pass looks like it should be okay to play. Uh, he's got a bit of a calf issue. I think, actually, this would be a perfect time to give a full debut to Ishmael. So let's do it. We're going to give Ishmael his debut today. See if he can find himself a goal for us. Apparently, we are underdogs for this. So we'll see how this goes. Against the unbeaten UTA, I think we're going to be in for a tough match here. Um, but the attendance looks a lot better than it did last season. We sold about the same number of season tickets this year, just over 6,000. But the stadium does look a lot more full than it did before. But I guess we're against... A big team here so we'll have to wait and see uh, what sort of selling figures we'll get this season first part of the game here on the half hour mark uh, the throw in it is headed away here's Vasilescu to Nezovic and here is Ismail on his full debut today and he's sat up Popescu keeper has saved it um, went for a corner in the end though good chance there to break the deadlock for us can we get anything from the corner kick Ismail and it's at the near post. It's headed away. I've made a bit of a tweak to my set pieces. I haven't really played with them too much in this series. So we're kind of looking at putting the corners in closer to the near post. Because I haven't really played with set piece tactics so far in this game. Here's Vasilescu. We've got about seven or eight minutes left of this uh, first half. He's got it back here. Maximovic got a lot of space in midfield here. UTA with a lot of men behind the ball. That's a good ball to Nezovic out on the left. He's going to go into the middle here. Got a few players to choose from. Where is he going to go all the way himself? He is. And the shot was a decent one. It was on target at least. But last five minutes of the first half. Shibanika. Ball given away. Maximovic. Could be a chance for us to score here. We've looked better so far than the other guys. We haven't really seen them um, create any chances so far. It's been all us. Vasilescu. Tunezovic. Ishmael. Negoiscu. It's fallen to Maximovic. Popov. Popescu, Negoiscu, oh, just wide. Disappointed that we haven't scored so far. We've been the better team here. Possession's about the same, but they haven't really done much with the ball. Have at UTA. They've given the ball away again here from the throw. Here's Nezovic, who has a lot of space here on this left-hand side. Can he put a ball in for Ishmael, or is he going to go himself? I think he was trying to squeeze that in there. He's being a bit brave today, is Nezovic. Popescu manages to get the ball back after losing it. Good recovery. Negoiscu do to Popescu. Ishmael. Oh, it's off the post. How haven't we scored yet? We've hit the woodwork twice. Well, a first half there where I can't believe we haven't scored a goal. UTA, we haven't really seen anything from. And I can't believe we're not ahead. One of these has got to go in at some point. We just need to keep going. Um, Dragici's on for Negoiscu, who hasn't done too well today. So change made. Hopefully we can get a goal here. I can't believe we didn't score in the first 45 minutes. And so far in the second half, there really hasn't been anything to talk about. Here we go. Here's one. Five minutes from time. Here's Ishmael. Hopefully we can get the goal that we deserve here. It's Vasilescu. And it's wide. We're going to put Nezovic up top. We're going to bring on Stupar for Ishmael. And I'm also going to 
bring on Morong for Maximovic. Well, there's a late free kick here in the last minute. It's headed away. Vasilevsky will get to this first. Stupar. Oh, we'll talk about leaving it late. 93rd minute and Stupar has finally got the goal that I think we deserve because I can't believe we didn't score in that first half. We hit the woodwork twice. Mankov, or sorry, Markov with a header away and Vasilevsky got there first. Stupar wide open, sees the keeper off his line and hits it at the near post. Great finish and what a time to score a goal. What a, and, a, and a win against the so well, we have, we've beaten their unbeaten run UTA after, UTA after six games unbeaten and we've just ended that with a 1-0 win a deserved win I think we really didn't see anything from UTA I don't think they created a single big chance and if they did we didn't see it and we leave it late 93rd minute goal from Stupa seals three points for us and that's now five wins from seven games really good going and a great result defensively very very pleased oh they were on a 17 match unbeaten run UTA I say they didn't really offer anything in that game. I don't think we saw them create a single chance. So that puts us just a point behind UTA, who still sits up at the table after that. Um, but a good win for us there. So let's have a look at what we have coming up. We have got our um, cup games coming up soon. We enter at round five this time. I think we entered at round four last season. So I presume shortly we'll find out who we're going to face in that. But in terms of the league, we've got Polytechnica Yashi next. Then we have Cluj and Astra Giorgio away from home. Then we host newly promoted Argish. Uh, and then after that, it's Concordia Kiazna away from home. Uh, I think for now we'll go with that. But there may well be some cup games before that if we get through round five. So uh, we'll do, again, five or six games off camera. We might do Kiazna. We might do Argish if there's a few more cup games squeezed in there. But we'll wait and see. But anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, do drop a like down below and leave comments. It's the best way to support and help the channel. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do subscribe and turn on notifications. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Hopefully we'll get there soon. Uh, next time, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead to sort of November, December time and, and see where we'll be fair uh, in, our, in our games after that. Um, we're doing well so far. Five wins out of seven is a good start, a very good start. And we'll see if we can keep it going. I don't know if we'll have enough about us to keep it up this year and get maybe in the top six, but we'll certainly give it our best shot and see how things go. But anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.